it's official. The 15th, I'm sorry, 16th entry in the Fire Emblem series has been announced for the Nintendo Switch and everyone's excited to see what this newest entry will bring to the table. This is a very big deal, since not only is the series going back to consoles after 10 years, yes, it's been that long, but with the success of Awakening and Fates along with how these games will fare, it's safe to assume that a lot of money and effort is going to be put into this game, and oh man am I eager to see what Fire Emblem Switch will be like. So much so, that I've compiled a list of 10 hopes I have for this game. Now granted, I can't expect this game to deliver on everything, but that won't stop me from getting my hopes up. So join me everyone, as it's time to look to the future and hope for the best, as I count down my top 10 hopes for Fire Emblem Switch. Before we begin, let's clear something up. First of all, this is just my opinion, and these are just personal things I want this game to have. And before you get ahead of yourselves, things like great gameplay, brilliant level design, a really strong cast of characters, an engaging story and so on, are basic elements that everyone wants this game to excel in. So rather, I'm looking at the little things that won't necessarily make or break the game, but rather just add that little bit of flavour to the mix. Also, take into consideration that these hopes can range from old mechanics coming back to brand new ideas to add to the series. And with all that cleared up, let us rally our spirits and pray to the gods, because I'm pretty confident Fire Emblem Switch is going to be a great game, and if it just so happens to grant my wishes, well I can safely say, move over Blazing Sword, because there's a new favourite in town. Stick to the sprites. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, this one is very far-fetched since it's highly unlikely to happen, but that's not gonna stop me from dreaming. Now while 3D graphics in Fire Emblem have got significantly better with Awakening and Fates, I've always thought the GBA games looked the best to this day because the sprite work was incredible, especially the attack animations. This is something I'd love to see the series go back to, since to me, 2D sprites just have this charm to them that even some of the highest quality 3D models can't match, and I know what you're thinking, dude, 3D is all the rage now, and the Switch is already more powerful than the Wii U, this could be the first time we see a 3D Fire Emblem game in HD. While yes, that is true, consider this, while 3D graphics are continuously getting better, so are 2D sprites. I mean, my god, the quality of sprite work in modern games is just outstanding. I mean, look at Blaze Blue and Guilty Gear games. Those look incredible. And if we could get this level of sprite quality in a Fire Emblem game, oh, it would be a match made in heaven. Not to mention having some really badass and over the top attack animations. Again, this is highly unlikely to happen, but I still feel it would look wonderful regardless. Again, a man can dream. To linear or not to linear? Fire Emblem can't seem to decide how level progression should be handled, since in some games it's purely linear like Blazing Sword, Genealogy of the Holy War and the Tellius games, and others like Sacred Stones, Gaiden and Awakening allow you to travel across a world map and grind enemies in a non-linear fashion. While this is never the selling point for the series, I think for the next game and from now on, it would be nice to let us decide on how to proceed with our journey, giving the players the option to either go through the game chapter by chapter, with barrack breaks in between, or to roam around freely and move along at your own pace. With this, we can please pretty much everyone, allowing players to take it slow, experiment with units and supports, or just mess around in a non-linear fashion, and have other players cut straight to the chase, limit their resources and experience for the extra challenge, and hone their skills at managing their units in linear mode. Honestly, I see no downside to this, and have wondered why this series hasn't done it sooner, but it's better late than never as they say. And if they give us these options, it would allow us to determine how we reach the end of our journey. But just in case the game is purely linear or has a linear mode, I feel we should look to the Telia series for a mechanic that needs to return. Bring back bonus EXP. One of the best features to come out of the Telia series by far was bonus EXP. This system was a fantastic way to help out weaker units as well as strengthen the fuck out of your best party members, and I loved using it so much. It turned Iliana into a monster in Radiant Dawn, I'll tell you that much. Naturally, if the game isn't linear and we can grind enemies on a world map, this should not come back because then it would make the game far too easy. But in any other case, give it back to us! Everyone I've talked to who's played the Tellius games loves this mechanic, so it'd be like a nice love letter to the fans of those games. That and finally putting these games on the eShop or giving them a HD remake, but I digress. Also, if you're wondering if this system should be tweaked, well, not really, since while bonus EXP is essentially an easy level up, the units only get free stat boosts every time, so it's less risky than leveling up normally and only getting one or sometimes no stat boosts, but also missing out on getting up to six stat boosts, so personally, I'd keep it the way it is. When it comes to certain other mechanics, however, there definitely needs to be some tweaking, and if you've been watching me for a while, you probably know where this is going. 
fix the weapons. Oh yes, I'm gonna go with that. Now I've brought up many times that I didn't like the way weapons were handled in Fates. I mean the idea was nice and some of the changes worked, but overall I felt it did more bad than good. But many of you argued the weapon changes were a good thing, which is fair enough. Nevertheless, the new system is flawed, but I'm not going to act like the old system was perfect either. So it looks like we're going to have to come to a compromise. Now I don't know the exact best way to fix this, but here's a few ideas to put intelligent systems on the right track, though I doubt they're watching this. Or you never know, they might be. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time someone from the Fire Emblem team acknowledged me. First off, don't let legendary weapons break. The idea is dumb, it doesn't make sense, so don't ever do it again. Two. If you are going to stick with unbreakable weapons, make it so the player isn't punished too harshly for using the stronger weapons. I mean, come on guys, what you did to the silver weapons in Fates was bullshit. Third, if you decide to make weapons breakable again, I would recommend keeping the buffing system and tweaking it so that players will be encouraged to use a variety of weapons and reduce the chance of them breaking. And finally, if you are still going to make them break, do what Fire Emblem 4 did and allow us to pay to get the weapons rebuilt if broken or simply reforge them. Why do they get rid of this in the first place? I swear, sometimes this series takes one step forward and two steps back. Hopefully Fire Emblem Switch will finally give us a weapon system that everyone is happy with, since they're definitely on the right track and I have faith that they can make this work. A standalone story. Now before you start raising your eyebrows and calling me a hypocrite since I said I wasn't going to talk about the story, this isn't about what I want to be in the story or the main plot, but rather I'd like this Fire Emblem game to distance itself from the other entries and just be its own story, without either taking place before or after the events of another Fire Emblem game story, or this game's story somehow coinciding with another Fire Emblem game like the Fates and Awakening shtick. Personally, I'd like this game's story to be self-contained and just focus on telling a narrative that stands on its own and isn't tied to any other Fire Emblem story. Now that's not to say it has to ignore the other games, you can still have references and such, a similar lore behind the Fire Emblem itself, and hell, I wouldn't mind if they mentioned Marth since he is the centre of the Fire Emblem universe, that's just the small things and I don't have a problem with that. I just hope this game doesn't cement itself to the events of the previous game, because the last thing we need is the story of this game being tied to Fates, which is then tied to Awakening, which is then tied to Shadow Dragon, otherwise we're going to get into Zelda timeline levels of confusing. Make. It. Huge! It's fair to say Fire Emblem Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn are some of the biggest games in the Fire Emblem series, and that's mainly due to the fact that they were on consoles and had all the extra processing power to be of such size and scale. I mean hell, Genealogy of the Holy War was a pretty massive game for its time. Well now we're a whole two generations ahead of the last console Fire Emblem game, on a system more powerful than the Wii U, and if the Wii U was able to make something as huge as Xenoblade Chronicles X, then there is no reason for this game not to be big. And I mean... BIG. I'm talking around 50 plus chapters, a huge cast of characters, very big levels with tons to do, extensive cutscenes, a huge world to explore, you get the idea. Now you could argue sometimes bigger isn't always better, and to be fair that's a valid argument, but consider the fact that this game is going to be on the Switch, so you'll be able to play it both at home and on the go, meaning you can start a chapter at home and then finish it when you're out and about and vice versa. This honestly would help to give the Switch more of an impact with its unique selling point and Nintendo are constantly pushing their hardware to its limits, so there's really no excuse for this game not to be big, then we'll really be playing with power. Third tier is the charm. Once again taking a leaf out of the Telius Games book, because I assume this game will be huge, they should bring back 30 units from Radiant Dawn. Everyone I talk to about Radiant Dawn mentions how much they love the fur tier units, and if this game is going to be a long one, we're going to need that extra incentive to keep pushing forward and use our units to the best of their abilities. Now I don't know if they'll make any changes to the fur tier units since some of their skills were rather OP, though I'd imagine they'd correspond to their fates counterparts this time and be more balanced, and also if they have to just reach level 10 and use another master seal like in the 3DS games, but regardless I'd love to see these classes back in action. And consider this, in Fire Emblem Fates, we were introduced to many new classes, most of which people really liked and felt should be a mainstay from now on. Well what if the units from those classes were allowed to become third tier units? Just imagine it, third tier ninjas, third tier malic knights, third tier mechanists, third tier basaras and third tier butlers and maids, though I can already picture what they turn into. The amount of possibilities here are endless and it would be so much fun to have an army of 30 units from different classes just tearing the enemies to pieces, and if there's a chance to trump Radiant Dawn's level of destruction, I don't see any reason not to. Relocation, relocation, relocation. This is a bit of an oddball choice, since Fire Emblem's setting is based around medieval fantasy Europe and it's pretty much the identity of the series. In fact, the only time they did something different was in Birthright, which is more eastern oriented. 
While I'm a huge fan of the medieval fantasy look and setting, why not branch out a bit and base this farming game in a different type of setting that still falls under fantasy and ancient history, just with some aesthetical differences? I feel this will help to give this game a unique identity and probably reinforce the idea of it having a standalone story. In my eyes, I'd love to see a Fire Emblem game set in somewhere like ancient Greece, with gods, monsters, titans, and a huge scale war spanning the entire continent. Hell, we could get Fire Emblem Spartans! Or why not go for an Arabian Nights setting, with magic, sword fights, travelling the seven seas, visiting tons of locations, building a very rich world and giving the game a real sense of adventure. I know some of you may complain that's too much of a big change and it wouldn't fit the style of the series, which is fair enough, I'll give you that. But I feel the themes of Fire Emblem can work in just about any setting, and who knows, sometimes change can be a good thing. While this idea is unlikely to happen, I'd love to see the story of Fire Emblem be told in a different setting to help breathe new life into the series and explore some ideas that haven't been tackled before, though I'm not getting my hopes up for a Fire Emblem game set in the future. It'll be a while until we see Fire Emblem lightsaber battles. <laughs> Multiple Lords, Multiple Pathways This one is very much down to how the story plays out, but something I've missed from the GBA games was that by having multiple Lords in the story, you got to experience their own exclusive chapters and see the story from their perspective. I love this in both Sacred Stones and Blazing Sword, and while in Binding Blade you only had one main Lord, there were still different chapters you could unlock if certain conditions were met, which added a lot of replay value to these games. This is something I'd love to see brought back in Fire Emblem Switch, especially if we can assume this is going to be quite the meaty game. By giving us multiple lords and various chapters exclusive to that lord's story, we can cram loads of content into this game while at the same time making each playthrough a different experience. Not to mention it might make it easier for players to complete one story and then do another later rather than experience every single chapter in a single file. Again, this one depends on the story in question, but if it were to happen, it would be fantastic. Taking one of the best aspects of the GBA games and updating it for a new audience, Fire Emblem Switch could be the Fire Emblem game that takes the best elements of everything and deliver us the ultimate Fire Emblem experience. But with that said, there is one major concern I dread could happen with Fire Emblem Switch, and the number one hope I have for this game is that this thing in particular doesn't happen. So here it is, my number one hope for Fire Emblem Switch. Don't force this game to be like Awakening again. Now just a minute. Before you get the wrong idea, I'm not saying I don't want Fire Emblem Switch to be like Awakening because Awakening sucks, since that's not the case. The reason I don't want this game to be like Awakening is because I don't want the future of Fire Emblem to be nothing but Awakening clones. Let's slow things down for a bit. It's common knowledge at this point that Fire Emblem Awakening is the most popular game in the series. It saved the series from death and introduced many fans into the Fire Emblem series, and I'm very grateful it did. But when Fire Emblem Fates was released, while that game has many aspects to make it stand out and be its own thing, I noticed just how much of Awakening was forced into this game for the sake of pleasing the fans, most of these aspects not making any sense, like the recycled characters or the child units. I get that Nintendo wants to capitalise on Awakening's success, but the last thing I want is every Fire Emblem game to just do what Awakening did for the sake of making money or being more popular. Now that's not to say you can't follow Awakening's example, since Awakening's support system and the new parent mechanic, though fixed in Fates, were brilliant additions to the series that I hope stay from now on. And hell, if Fire Emblem Switch incorporates things like child units and bringing back old characters into this game in a way that makes sense, then that's fine, have at it. But for the love of God, don't force this stuff into the game just so you can be like Awakening. Don't give us child units just because Awakening did it and make up some more deep run bollocks. Don't give us an avatar just so we can have quote unquote waifus. And don't force characters like Lucina or anyone else into the story just because they're popular. I mentioned in my video about Fire Emblem Echoes that if that game didn't do too well, Nintendo would more than likely pander to the Awakening fans and try to force everything Awakening did into the future Fire Emblem games, which is something I pray doesn't happen. One of the things I love about Fire Emblem is that every game, even if it's a sequel or a prequel, has a distinct identity and is very much its own thing. But Fates made me notice a problem that could hurt the series in the long run, and the last thing I want is for Fire Emblem to suffer from Call of Duty and Assassin's Creed Syndrome. And I'm not saying this because I hate Awakening, no, I love this game. It may not have been my first Fire Emblem game, but it helped to cement my love for this series. It was the reason I started this channel, and for a while it was my favourite Fire Emblem game. And come on people, you know how much Sumia means to me. I just don't want this series to copy-paste Awakening to the point in which every Fire Emblem game from here on out will be Awakening 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, HD Legacy Edition and so on. Fire Emblem Awakening may be the most popular Fire Emblem game, it may have saved the series, it may have introduced many more fans, and hell, I think it's one of the best games in the series, but that doesn't mean every game afterwards should just be an Awakening clone, and I certainly hope this doesn't happen 
to Fire Emblem Switch. This has been Blazing Knight. I wish you all a great night, take care, and I am incredibly hopeful for Fire Emblem Switch. Going back to consoles and having the power to create something truly epic is something I'm very much looking forward to, and I hope my 10 hopes for this game come true. But what about all of you? Do you agree with my choices? What do you hope will be in Fire Emblem Switch? Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, in the meantime, be sure to check out my last video, Hopes and Predictions for Fire Emblem Warriors featuring Max HP. Also, don't forget to check out my video talking about the 5 best of worst changes in Fire Emblem Fates. Anyway, thank you all very much for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Blazing Knight. Also, don't forget to follow me on Amino to see posts and lists not featured on my channel, or just to have a friendly chat with me. Anyway, that's it from me. I'll see you all next time.